Hi, friends. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. On this podcast, we introduce you to the women of Christ Chapel Bible Church. We share our stories to encourage and equip each other to live out our faith in Jesus. We are so glad you're here. Hi, I'm Kathy Harrelson. In our last episode, we looked at guilt and the forgiveness that God offers us. In this episode, we look at the forgiveness we give to others and receive from them. I am joined by my friends and colleagues, Kristen Hoff and Sarah Stiles. We look at the hard work of forgiveness and the fruit from it that we wouldn't trade for anything. Here's our conversation. Forgiveness is one of the most challenging, wonderful, Christ-like things that we can do, and we are here to talk about it. I'm Kathy Harrelson, here with my colleagues and friends, Sarah Stiles and Kristen Hoff, and we are going to hopefully encourage each other with what it looks like to forgive and be forgiven by other people. Again, we're primarily going to focus on interpersonal forgiveness and choosing to walk in humility and grace and not hold against people wrongs that they have committed. And we try to seek out forgiveness for wrongs we've committed against others. This is based in Christ's wonderful forgiveness for us, for all the things that we have done wrong and how we get to respond to that and modeling that to other people. We admit that there's a massive scope when it comes to forgiveness. Sometimes we're the person who's been offended, and sometimes we're the offender. Sometimes it's a massive, significant, even one-time event that marks us, and sometimes it's those little everyday things that when we don't deal with well can really grow and become a big thing. So we hope to touch on as we talk the scope of forgiveness and what some of those practical steps are that we can walk out even in situations that are incredibly difficult and painful. And so in light of that, I would like to ask us to perhaps start by illustrating what that scope of forgiveness looks like. So Kristen, would you perhaps start us off with maybe choosing one side of that scope and an example of what forgiveness has looked like in your life? Sure, I would love to. Um, So for me, my story is one that is between myself and my dad. Um, my parents divorced when I was young. They um, lived two different places, so it was a lot of traveling back and forth between the two places. My dad was an interesting person. Mm-hmm. Um, he was not necessarily a good person. He was someone who was very well loved, very well liked. He had that type of person ma- personality and charisma that everybody wanted to be around. But if you were not someone that he cared for, you knew it. Um, it was almost as if he kind of collected people in a way that if you could offer him something or do something for him or you were part of some kind of image he had, mm-hmm. then he kept you close. But if you did not, then... You really didn't matter. Um, I had the great privilege of being someone that he cared about a lot. I was his oldest child, his first child. Um, So I, young, remember lots of great memories of him. Mm -hmm. Um, I know he loved me. I know he cared about me. He just had a very interesting way of showing it. Mm -hmm. So as I grew older, my eyes just kind of were open. I got to see more of who he was, understand more of his character, understand more of how he treated people. Um, I was able to hear and distinguish between lies and truths that before I just took at face value. Mm. And then as I got older, I would realize like, yeah, he's going to tell me that, but that's probably not going to happen. So once I hit middle school, um, I was selfish enough that I was like, okay, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. So I was the one that kind of severed the relationship then. Mm -hmm. He was not happy about it. It did not end well at all. But it was what it was. I got to go to middle school because it's a whole lot more fun to hang out with my friends and do sports and do all the other things that a teenage girl wants to do (laughs) than hang out with Uh her dad and deal with all of that stuff. The relationship did not get better while I was in high school. I Mm -hmm. actually got married very young. I was 19. 
Oh. My dad did not come to the wedding. He did not like the idea that I was going to have my stepdad walk me down mm-hmm. the aisle. So he chose not to um, come to the wedding, which was his choice, and that was fine. Um, after my first child was born, we went to Christmas at his mother's house, so my grandmother's house. And that was probably the first time I had seen him in years. And I wow. can still remember walking in the door, and it was actually my oldest that came through the door first. And he uh-huh. was like, hey, Mom, who's this? And that's <laughs> oh, always a wow. fun— How old was he? He was like two. Oh, wow. Um, fun way to try to be like, well, that is yeah, yeah. my— other dad, because he knew my stepdad, and he knew him as granddaddy. Yeah. So that was hard. But at that point, he really wanted to pursue reconciliation, which I had always had that desire, always wanted to do that. So I thought that was a great idea. But because of my past, because of hurts that I had had, because of the way that even though I was the one that broke off that relationship in middle school— Seeing how he treated other people through the past, I knew that I had to protect my Mm -hmm. family. So I told him that. I just said, hey, I feel like I've been hurt in the past, and I would love to reconcile with you. However, it has to be between you and I first, and then Mm -hmm. my family is allowed to be a part of it. Um, He did not like that. That did not go over very well. So he was the one at that point that pretty much broke off the rest of our relationship. So I went from that point to probably about 10 years later. So it was about three years ago that I got a phone call from my aunt who, um, it was from a person, from a person, from a person who had talked to the woman who he was living with at the time. And he was not doing well. He was in a hospital here in the Metroplex. He had gotten the flu, um, and was very, very ill. Mm -hmm. So as the next of kin, they knew that they needed to call me and talk to me. So I went to the hospital. I was able to talk with the woman he lived with, talk with doctors. Um, I knew the scope of the illness and what was likely to happen. And at that time, I knew that something had to be done. I knew, um, In my heart, my biggest concern for him was that he didn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. I hoped that he did. But all external things that I had known from his life showed that he did not. But also it was that we had never, ever, I I had that expectation and that desire that one day we would be able to reconcile and it was probably not going to happen. So I got to spend the day there with him. Um, And to be honest, it would have been very easy for me to be like, well, that's just so sad. I'm sorry. And I could have left the hospital and probably been just fine. However, that would not have been God's desire for me or for that relationship. So I was able to spend the day, uh, I was able to share the gospel with him, even though he so was um, in a coma and didn't, may or may not have known that I was there. I was able to say, you know, Dad, I forgive you. Mm. It was um, hard growing up with him, but it's still, he was my dad. And I, yeah. As hard as it is, I do still love him and care for him. Mm. Um, But also just that desire of, I want you to know the Lord. So I was able to do that and leave, and he passed away about 24 hours later. Um, So sorry. And then afterwards, I was able to meet some of his friends. So again, another blessing of the person of who he was. He had great friends that loved him, and they wanted to help me make sure that he was laid to rest. So it was that idea of God has called me to forgiveness. God has called me to honor my father. He didn't let me pick my father. Otherwise, it probably (laughs) wouldn't have been the same type of relationship, but we don't often get to pick those things. It was just up to me to be obedient and in that situation follow God's plan. So, Wow, Kristen, thank you for sharing that. I can't fathom how hard that was. And I can think of so many friends and other people in difficult situations, difficult relationships where that choice to forgive and that call to forgive is there, but it's incredibly hard and it's incredibly difficult. And I really appreciate you sharing about how hurtful that was and how the Lord carried you through that. And I'm sure still is giving you grace as you Mm -hmm. remember your dad On the other side, we had talked about the scope of forgiveness. And so I think it's important 
to acknowledge that not every opportunity we have for forgiveness is as significant as that, but yet those everyday things also really matter and impact our lives and frankly can grow into big things Mm -hmm. and into bitterness. And so Sarah, would you maybe kind of show us the other side or the other end of the spectrum on forgiveness? What does that maybe look like in everyday life? Yeah, for sure. Um, Well, first off, thank you for sharing. I know that's going to resonate with some women, um, but I love that it shows, I love that the Lord led you through that process and helped you. And um, so, yeah, thank you. Um, But yeah, for an everyday example, um, so one thing that comes to mind is, um, so there's a meeting that I go to every Monday morning and my friend leads it. And I knew driving in one day to the office that I was going to be late. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? I need to apologize to him um, when I show up. And so when I got there, I apologized for being late. And um, he, I knew that he would do this. I knew that he would say, I forgive you because that's his character. And, you know, what's hard is, so I struggle with being on time and it's hard when I have to keep asking for forgiveness for the same thing over and over again. But I love that, um, that my coworker was able to still forgive me for a repetitive habit that I am working on. Um, Yeah. And so I think it's important, even little things like that. Sometimes I just look over and I'm like, oh, it's not that big a deal. But to show honor and to maintain uh, unity in relationships, I think it's really important that when you notice a wrong to admit it, even as hard as it is, but the Lord helps with humility. So, Thanks for sharing that and for illustrating both of you the scope of forgiveness that we have talked about. And so maybe we can turn a little bit and share more some specific examples or tips or tools or verses the Lord has shown us as we've tried to practically implement this, Mm -hmm. knowing that even though we're going to talk about really practical things, we understand that for some things, there's a whole lot of pain and emotion that comes along with that. And so we trust the spirit to help us with the pain as well as with the obedience. And for me, as I think about forgiveness, something I've been thinking a lot about lately is taking the time to actually determine, did someone actually wrong me or do we just think differently about something (laughs) or have a different opinion about something or was there an actual wrong that occurred? And I'm reminded my house had a pipe burst back in February in the storms we had and I've been out of my house for eight months and it has been very difficult and cumbersome and far more challenging than I could have expected and taken hundreds of hours and is still not anywhere close to being done. And one of the things, this is a very small thing, even though it seems big, it's small, I had to have multiple appliances delivered and... They kept breaking and kept not working. And I had two dishwasher deliveries, four stoves, two refrigerators, three beds, <laughs> oh three <my> washers. <laughs> when enough I, to furnish a couple houses. I know. Right? And so they would have to drop them off and come back and pick them up. And it's been very cumbersome. And delivery companies like free to be home yeah. all day or an extended amount of time. And so it's difficult to come up with that many days to be home all day. And so it was a Saturday and I had stayed home for the third washer to be delivered. This was about a month ago. And they showed up within their window. I was very excited, get ready to come in. And then the guy comes to me and says, we have a problem. And I'm like, okay, what's the problem? And he said, we brought a dryer instead of a washer. And I was like, (laughs) I have dirty clothes that need to be washed and now a not washer again for the third time. And so customer service calls and wants to plan another day for me to be home all day. And I literally didn't have one in the next two weeks. So I was very frustrated. And so I got in the car to drive to the store to have a discussion and I actually was wearing a shirt that said, be kind on it. And I thought (laughs) I might need to change shirts before I go. Yeah, Yeah. I did. I did actually had a jacket on. I thought if it goes poorly, I'll zip it up. But the whole (laughs) way there, I was praying for the spirit to help me not blow it. And by the time I got there, I realized, you know, this 
company, this was the first thing they were supposed to deliver. And no one intentionally decided to not deliver the right thing. Yeah. Somebody somewhere put the sticker on a dryer box instead of a washer box and somebody loaded it. No one had sinned against me. No one had been rude or unkind or gossiped or lied. No one had sinned against me. Someone had just put a sticker on the wrong box. Mm -hmm. And I did not need to lose it over something that wasn't even a sin against me. It yeah. just happened. Now, there are other times and have been other times in this lengthy process that people have sinned against me, to be honest, some of which, by God's grace, I've chosen to overlook, mm -hmm. and some of which, even though I choose to forgive, I've spoken with a lawyer about mm -hmm. because there have been some significant wrongs. Thankfully, we've not had to go to court, but sometimes we have to involve the justice system. Yeah. Just because we forgive doesn't mean there's not justice. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I go to sleep at night, I try to reflect back on the day and determine, was there a wrong? And if there wasn't a wrong, then just because it negatively impacted me and some of my time or selfishness or was different than what I would have done, I don't need to forgive anyone. It just happened. Yeah. And if there was a wrong, I try to say, I forgive and say the person's name out loud. Sometimes I'll even hold my hands open because even if there's things that need to be followed up with the next day or in coming days, I don't want bitterness to grow because it can grow really fast. And even if my anger starts righteous, it became become yeah. unrighteous very, very huh. quickly. <laughs> and so step one for me often in the forgiveness process is has someone actually wronged me or have mm -hmm. I actually wronged someone? Mm -hmm. Or is it just something like someone put a sticker on a wrong box yeah. and I need to treat it according to what happened rather than how difficult or frustrating the situation may be to yeah. me. I love that you that the Lord helps you it was take the, the time <laughs> take the time to slow down and really process yeah. that. Cause so often I feel like I'm offended. You did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. God was Thank gracious. You. Yeah. Well and I think it's important to note that the person doesn't always have to say they were sorry. They don't yeah. always have to ask for forgiveness. And if we hold on to whatever burden, whether it is just an offense or whether or not they've actually sinned against us, if we hold on to their sin and carry with us, that's a burden on our shoulders that mm -hmm. we shouldn't have to carry. And so we can forgive them without them asking for forgiveness. Um, I, forgiveness is something that I've actually struggled with quite a bit. And so there's always two verses that come to mind. And the first one is Romans 12, 19. And this one reminds me that God is my ultimate source of vengeance and of justice. So he is important. the one that yes. is going to take it out because it's not me that takes it on, even though I would love to be the yeah. one that puts forth <laughs> consequences for everyone who's ever wronged me, but it's not. Yeah. And so that verse says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Um, and I think that one's very important to also know that it doesn't mean that if it is a specific wrong that does require the our civil system for us to actually pursue justice that way, you definitely should. But I think mm -hmm. there's a time and a place for that. And that wisdom and discernment to know that it's God's and not ours is very yeah. important. Yeah. Um, the other one that really has been one that has weighed on my heart heavily is Matthew 6, 14 through 15. And that one says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive mm -hmm. you. But if you do Powerful. not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive yours. And I think it's very <laughs> important for us to remember <laughs> that none of us are perfect. None of us yeah. have walked this life besides Jesus as sinless. And if God can forgive me for some of the very yucky things that I've done or thought or I mean, all of the things. I don't have to share all of them. Um, <laughs> I should be able to forgive other people yeah, because that's what he's called to me to do, and that's what he's mm. told me to do. Uh, someone mm. said earlier, and I wrote it down so that I don't forget it, but forgiveness is one-sided. It's that mm. reconciliation that's two-sided. So on yeah. our end, we can always offer forgiveness, whether or not they've asked for it or not. Oof, that's what good. Gift. And those are great. I mean, Romans 12 and Matthew 6. Those are just good chapters, yeah, they like are. They so are. many good yeah. <laughs> things in that. Um, you know, I'd love to add into this that even when I've worked to forgive, 
I can still have hurt feelings that linger, yes. which makes me think, you know, okay, if I if I'm still hurt, like have I really forgiven them? And you know, the hurt comes and goes and it may still linger. But I think a better question to ask is is there bitterness remaining like Kathy yes. you were saying bitterness can yes. grow if it's not dealt with. And I think one way I'm able to see, hey, is that bitterness still there? Is there some things that Lord and I still need to work through is, am I treating the person in front of me that I've either forgiven or I'm working through according to their past offenses? Am I still holding that over them or am I treating them as if I really have forgiven them? That's a great question to ask. Yeah. And I think, I don't think forgiveness means forgetting how someone has hurt you, Mm -hmm. but I do think it is um, treating them as if their past wrongs aren't still affecting your relationship. Yes, definitely. Um, Instead, I think that even with the memory of the offense against you, I forgive as Lord forgave me, like you were saying, Kristen. God doesn't hold my sin against me anymore. And oh my gosh. (laughs) And like, there's no bitterness in his dealings with me, even though I've wounded him so many times more than I even realize. And yet he treats me with grace and with love. And so when I'm interacting with someone who has wronged me, I try and carry over with his help. If, okay, if he's not holding it against me, and I've been forgiven everything, then with this person in front of me, I can also forgive them because they forgave me. So hard, but so good. Yeah. yeah. It is It is hard. It is really, really hard. Um, I can think of a couple difficult relationships ac- actually where I could speak. I could choose to speak badly of them if I wanted with friends or family who might even join and, you know, <laughs> join in on my side. And yet forgiveness means um, instead not, again, not holding it against them and not speaking badly of them behind their back, even if it was, even if they were the ones really in the sure. wrong. Um, the I love the example that Christ left us of he not only took the extra step to forgive, but to honor and to love um, which is what, you know, one thing you mentioned, Kristen, in your story at the beginning was uh, not only did I tell him that I forgave him, but I wanted to honor him mm-hmm. afterwards, even after he had passed. And so forgiveness really does, it does have that almost one-time action, but also it's a process mm-hmm. as well and yeah. something that does need to work through. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. And really, I think, and I've learned this, probably through marriage more than anything, is that forgiveness is two conversations. Forgiveness is that first conversation where you come to each other and you're say just plain, hey, I'm sorry. And then whatever you need to do to make it right, to make up with each other, that is what happens. And then later there's a second conversation where you can come back and say like, hey, you know what? This is why I was hurt by that. Or this is how I felt when that happened. Or... I did this because you did. That way it's not offering excuses first. It's that apology first. And then it's seeking that reconciliation afterwards. Because that's always what God's intention for us is. I mean, he laid that out for us in Matthew chapter 18. There's an actual like step-by-step list. It's probably one of my favorite things (laughs) that he's done because there's very few of those checklists. (laughs) And I'm a checklist gal. But there's a process where you, you know, if someone's wronged you or you feel wrong with someone, you go to that person and it's the two of you that talk. And then if there's not reconciliation at that point, then you grab someone else who's wiser and more mature and Mm. keep going. And there's a process, it's like you said, there's a process that you go through. and Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that, that That's God good. gives us that That's, opportunity. Yes. Yeah, I think we're both, che- we're, all of us are checklists. <laughs> I think we, we all are. are. Step yes. by step. I know step, we are. So. <laughs> That's a good, another good example from Matthew. Yeah. Um, with, Pretty smart. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, with ongoing relationships, so marriage for you I and other things for me, um, I think it is so important, but again, so hard in owning your part in the conflict. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, I have a family member that I uh, can butt heads with a lot, and sometimes I've been the offender. Sometimes I've been the offended, and 
many times we both have a part that we need to own up to. And humility comes into play when the Lord helps me understand that I'm to own up to my part. Even if they don't own own up to theirs, um, even if I felt theirs was the greater offense, and I'm not responsible for how she responds. I'm responsible for my own actions, Um, which is one thing that counseling has helped (laughs) with (laughs) a lot as well. Um, I am responsible for how I love her and how I treat her and how I can ask for forgiveness. And on the flip side, not holding that previous offense against her the next time I see her. Um, What's harder for me, well, what's hardest is when, and I kind of mentioned this a little bit, when I see the other's sin as greater and more damaging, and I've had like, it feels like I've had this tiny little part to play in it. I have a, a very high sense of justice, and sometimes the end is me being right, not that you know, the end being a resolved relationship. And it's then when I'm, when I have anger and when that justice is high and when I just, it doesn't feel fair that I, when I take it to the Lord, it's there that I see my, um, his complete holiness, my forgiven state. And okay, I think, okay, everything I've done wrong, he's forgiven me. So let's, work on this and let's forgive this. So, yeah. Something y'all have both mentioned is the apology, which reminded me of, frankly, I'm kind of embarrassed at how old I was in life before I realized (laughs) what a good apology looked like or sounded like. Because we hear a lot of things, and I've said them, if I hurt your feelings, you know, or sorry, not sorry, or I used to think that... (laughs) My least favorite. uh, Yes. I used to think that if I explained what had happened and the situation leading up to it, that it would make the person feel less offended if they knew everything that had happened. And I'm very wrong in that. Again, sometimes a second conversation is helpful. Mm -hmm. But initially, I learned from a friend who one time wronged me and it hurt and there's an actual burden to bear when someone wrongs us Mm -hmm. it doesn't just go away there was a burden to bear and that person came to me and very clearly said I did this wrong said what it was very clearly asked will you forgive me for Mm -hmm. and also said I've already started talking to the Lord about why I did that. So hopefully I can change and not do that to someone again. Wow. And it was a clear, (laughs) powerful apology. And what surprised me so much was I had been really hurt. And when I hurt someone, I feel so bad. I've hurt someone and I want to take that hurt away. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked at how much that very clear Mm -hmm. apology took almost all of that hurt right away. Now, I'm not saying that always happens, but in that instance, it did for me. And I learned from their example, they are the hero in that story, not me. Their apology is something that I've tried to model Mm -hmm. moving forward because of how impactful it was for me and how much it restored and really probably improved our relationship. And so I was so graciously the receiver of that effective apology. Mm, yeah. That's wow. an awesome gift. It really well, is. And, and I think that hits the head like, about you talking about learning about forgiveness, because forgiveness, I think, is a process through our lifetime to yeah. learn how to cope with and deal with and to forgive others. And I think we're also called to teach our children mm-hmm. about this. Yes. So I, I did not necessarily grow up this way, but I had a great and wise friend that did this with her kids, and I watched them do it and model it. So we can forced it with ours where um, I have two boys. So often it's a very physical <laughs> wrong against the other. But when one of them would wrong the other one, I would make them go up to that person and be like, hey, brother, I'm sorry for blank. Usually it was hitting you and I shouldn't have been hitting you. And then the other one had to say, I forgive you. They couldn't say I, it's okay. They couldn't whatever because a wrong is still a wrong. Yeah. They had to say I forgive you. And often it was like I forgive you because my mom told me I had to say I forgive you. But <laughs> it was very much but you're because they were them. told them to. <laughs> but good. it's exciting to see that it, it is a process and they learn and they're constantly getting better. My oldest is now 15 
And there were a few, it was, was a few weeks ago where he and I were in a slightly heated discussion. Our voices may have been a little bit louder than they should have been. And I recognized that it was getting out of control. And so I was like, hey, bud, we're going to put this to an end. You were wrong. This is your punishment. I'm going to go cook dinner. And mm-hmm. this is the end of it. We're done. So mm-hmm. he went his way. I went mine. I cooked dinner. And he came back an hour later. And he was like, you know what, Mom? You were right. Wow. Um, I was wrong. I should not have treated you that way. I should not have spoke to you that way. And I was, <laughs> I, I don't even boy. know if I said anything. I just probably was shocked and stood there and was like, oh, well, I forgive you. Thank you. And it, wow. I think in my next statement was, your punishment still stands, but I appreciate it. But it was that idea of getting to see him do that full circle. And he really did mean it. Wow. And so to so know that we can learn that. And so yeah. it is. It's a habit. We have to do it whether or not we really always want to, but mm-hmm. if we have to do it. Yes. Wow. That's good. And I love, too, that you said, and this is something I need to work on as an adult, that you said you have to say, I forgive you in response instead of, it's okay, because yeah. or no worries, because I think that's something that, that we say. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. It is. Um, but I love that you taught your boys so clearly how to ask for forgiveness, and you got to see the fruit of it, which is awesome. The one thing I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, more there than are that. many others. <laughs> Um, another thing I've learned about forgiveness is when to ask for forgiveness and when not to. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, let's say I have been envious over my neighbor's new house, new re- renovations, all of that, and that carries over into an envious attitude about her. This is a sin because the Lord has told us do not envy, yeah. and yet she has no idea. <laughs> so it's just something that I then bring to her and tell her, or is this something that I bring to the Lord? And I think this is one of those instances where it would do more damage to the relationship that I've been trying to build. Yeah, if she's not, if she's not aware. And so this is an instance where I would bring it before the Lord and uh, 1 John 1, 9 comes into play, which is written to believers. Um, And it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And what I love about that, because it's written to believers, is that we've already been completely forgiven for all of our sins. And yet he asks of us, hey, still bring before me the daily offenses. And it's for the sake of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So I can come before him knowing I'm completely accepted before him, but also realizing, hey, I've done this. I have this envy going on. Please forgive me for this. So yeah, that's one instance where it would be between the Lord (laughs) alone. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great example of knowing of thinking through, sometimes it fits just a motive of our heart that no one knows about. We just take it to the Lord. Yeah. I think that's really important. I think about the flip side of that too. We've talked about a good apology and obviously a good apology is important, but there are times when we need to do more than just apologize. Mm-hmm. If we've created an issue that we need to go back and actually fix something. If we've mm-hmm. stolen something from someone, we need to return it. If we've lied about someone and that's created an issue, we need to go correct that. I remember after I graduated college, I was reminded of a season when I was in high school when I, out of anxiety had cheated on test for a mm. season. To be honest, I'm not even sure if it helped my grade. It was anxiety <laughs> driven mm-hmm. and I had done well in college, but that was something I had done wrong. And I had this high school diploma and I knew that I had done something wrong in earning that. And so I called the high school up and said, I'm sorry. And if I need to give this back, I'll give it back. Yeah. They were gracious and said, you can keep it, which I appreciated. But it was that reminder that sometimes we do more than just say, I'm sorry. We offer to fix something we've done wrong. Yeah. Maybe it's just serve someone a little differently to rebuild trust. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't need to go around feeling constantly guilty in a state of emotional penance, but yeah, yeah. there are times that I need to actually do something to fix a wrong that I yeah. have done. Wow. I love that you went after those years that you went back and did that. That's yeah. amazing. Mm. Hmm. Awesome. I 
know that we've talked about many great things and I would love to us to maybe turn the corner and kind of begin to close a little bit. And so I would love to hear from each of you if there's a final practical tip or final verse that maybe you haven't gotten an opportunity to share. I'd love to hear just what your final thoughts are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously from our discussion, you can tell there's a lot of lot of aspects to forgiveness and but all of it really does involve the Lord and asking for help and and continuing the process I think one thing that I'd love to add about forgiveness is that when you've asked for forgiveness you don't have to keep asking for it you don't have to like you mentioned emotional penance Kathy Um, but really just standing in that that freedom of okay I've asked for forgiveness even if the person continues to treat me badly or whatever it might be, or if I still feel um, shame or guilt and I really want to earn back their love, I think we only have to look at our relationship with the Lord and see, okay, we ask for forgiveness and there might be consequences, you know, but we can rest in the fact that we've done all the Lord asked us to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's no, there's nothing we have to do on this side with the Lord of earning back. And so similarly with relationships, I've asked for forgiveness. I can go on with life. Yeah, so. you can walk in freedom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. The I think the one piece of advice I give for a lot of situations is to have a great friend who is godly, who is wise, that you can go to, that you can share your frustrations with. Mm-hmm. You can process through things, whatever it needs to be, um, so that they can give you wisdom back. I have a great friend that I do that with often where I can go to her and tell her about whatever is going on. Most of the time, I would prefer that she told me, you know, my husband was wrong and not (laughs) myself because that's usually what I'm going to her about. But there are a lot of times where she's like, no, you know what? I think that was you. And so you need to go back and apologize. (laughs) Or she can help me work through like, hey, you know what? This is an instance where his intentions were not to hurt you. You just had her Mm. feelings for that day. This is a day where you turn the cheek, Mm. the other cheek. And so having someone that can help you work through those things, going back to Scripture and looking like, okay, is this a wrong? Is this not? Mm. How do I work through this? That is what we need yeah. in order. And again, the goal is always reconciliation. So forgiveness yes. should always lead to reconciliation because mm. that's what God's called us to do. I too am so grateful for those friends that will tell me the truth, whether I want whether to hear it or not. Yeah. But that's what pushes toward reconciliation. Mm-hmm. It helps us see things as they really are. Yeah, I was reminded as we were all talking how intentional forgiveness is. Yes. None of us shared a story where you accidentally forgave someone. (laughs) None of us shared a story (laughs) where you accidentally (laughs) asked for forgiveness. It is very intentional. And just to reiterate, sometimes incredibly difficult and Mm. incredibly painful. And we all have experienced that and have immense Mm. compassion on that. And yet at the same time, don't want to not talk about forgiveness just because it's hard because we can get caught in bitterness and make it worse Mm -hmm. instead of gradually walking through those steps to experience the freedom and the joy the Lord has for us. And I love in Colossians where the scripture calls us to forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And again, Kristen, this is the second half, that reconciliation. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect Mm -hmm. harmony. There are things outside of our control. And sometimes that we can do everything right and the perfect harmony not be there. But sometimes there is incredible harmony that can result from walking in forgiveness with each other as the Lord has Mm -hmm. forgiven us. Mm -hmm. What a gift. It is a gift. Okay, let me close this in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful for Jesus and his immense forgiveness of us. I pray, Father, that you would make us women who are quick to ask for forgiveness when we have wronged someone and that we are very quick to forgive others. God, we really need your help to do that because it is difficult to do both of those things. So, Spirit, would you please empower and guide us as we do those things? 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.